but that's okay. So we're starting to get um, uh, a decent amount of references in here. So um, yeah, so we're getting close to the next step, and the next step is going to start to we're going to start to mine this to look at what the literature says the concentrations are of these um, of, of these microplastics. So our our literature here is primarily focused on <laughs> the deep in the pelagic ocean, but if there's anything about sediments or stuffing critters, like that's fair game, but we're not, you know, if you, if you see that while you're searching, but primarily we're oriented around sediments, water column, marine, right? So we're not really worried about um, stuff in humans. We're not worried about stuff in trees or, or agricultural soils, right? We're, we're focusing on um, uh, these marine um, concentrations of things. And recall, our goal is to figure out what the concentration of these uh, pollutants are and the diversity, the composition. And so what we're working towards is we're working towards um, going and mining all this stuff. And so this is what we, um, you know, historically people have talked about this as a, you can call this a literature review. Um, but in the last couple decades, it's, it's taken on a different name, which is a meta-analysis. So it's rather than, uh, at this step, rather than us doing the work, we're pulling together the work that other people did, but maybe doing an analysis different than they did. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to go to one of these papers here and say, ah, these, these folks went and they took some cores from wherever. Where do they get their cores? What uh, types of plastic were they finding? And what was the concentration of those things, right? And so we'll, we'll basically fill that out and say, oh, they had uh, one piece per cubic meter of polyethylene or something like that, right? And do it in a systematic way. So once we get this all together, we can actually start to, um, uh, uh, we don't want to start to, we will set the stage. And then when we start collecting our data, we can compare our data to that stuff. Is it, does it match? Is it, is it, this, is it similar? Is it really different? what's going on, whether it's in a, a sand dollar or a crab or, or you know, deep sea sediment or whatever. So that's what we're working towards. Um, so most of these references that are in here um, have, uh, a, we can see the, the, the primary, interesting. Uh, we can see a primary, um, uh, you know, the literature's there, the PDF's attached. There's a few that aren't. There's a few that uh, we need to still request um, because they weren't in the database or they're not pub and or they're not publicly accessible or whatever. But the vast majority are in here. Um, and then, so one is we have what we've been working on. So we're, we go to a database we query. And so now that everybody has sort of the rough feel for how this works, and this is the same process you guys do for your capstone or any other you know, rigorous research. Um, you know, the first little bit is, hey, is there, is people, have people done any work related to this? And you kind of cast around, we find some stuff. Now we're starting to find stuff. So now, especially when we have more than, so it's important for you guys to do any time you do basic research. But in particular, now that um, what we're, or in this case, we're working in a group, like I wanna make sure I'm not duplicating Max's efforts and I wanna make sure that, um, you know, wh when, when Max and Heather go look, look for their stuff, we're not leaving something out. And so, the best way for that is to have notes and to sort of work strategically through things. So rather than just sort of go into some random database or Google this or that, um, which is what you might do in the very, very first step or two just to sort of see if anything's out there, now we're being more rigorous. So the first thing we're gonna do is, uh, let's see. So the first thing is I have um, this bad boy up here and I don't know why it looks like this. It shouldn't look like this. It should look like this. Um, and so uh, we have a couple different databases. Um, these ones, uh, this one you definitely can't see. I don't know if you guys can see this one or not, but these, but one, two, three, four, these ones over here, you guys can all get to through our library or, or in the case of Google Scholar, you can just get to it from the web. Okay. As a reminder, these are databases that are, that are an assemblage of journals and other sources of information. 
there is no one perfect database. There, there's no, no such thing as a, as a repository that has all of the journals in the world, which would be great, right? And we just go there and just get, doesn't exist. They all have strengths, they all have weaknesses. Uh, they, uh, some of them are tuned to biomedical, some are tuned to uh, anthropology, some are tuned to, you know, whatever, d different, different things and, and have different focuses. Others are just a publisher so Scopus is um, essentially uh, a, a, the largest, El I believe it's Elsevier, the largest um, publisher of academic journals. Um, it's their database, right? So that, so that would be journals that they publish, but not necessarily journals from a competitor or another society or something like that. Um, so I, I've already run through the web of science for us. I've already done that one. Um, but I get, as I said, these, these folks are all available to us uh, either through the web in this case or through um, logging into our library and going to our databases. So what that's going to mean is, uh, and, and then over here I have some words we can, we can, we can hunt for, right? So, so I would go to one of these d databases, JSTOR, and I would type in microplastic and abyss, right? Or microplastics and bathy, or microplastics and benthic. And some of these, some of these terms will produce no results or one or two results. Others will produce hundreds of results, right? It's just, it's just a matter of how we go. The point is we wanna make sure we look in all these places. You might have some additional ideas. You might say, oh my gosh, I'm also gonna add on this other modifier that's cool, um, but at this phase when we're sort of trying to cast out, we don't want to be super hyper hyper focused, right? Um, so the first pass is, hey, are there any, are there any peer-reviewed publications in, let's say, JSTOR that speak to microplastics and or that that have in the title or the search word or the abstract the term microplastic and have the term abyss. Right, and so abyss could be abyss, it could be abyssal, it could be any of the other variants of those words, but, but that's, how, um, that's how we'll do this. And then, one, and then so you guys will go do that, check that out, boom, 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 boom. And then, and then when you see the, so maybe we come up with 30 references, let's say. Okay, cool. And then you get, you're gonna skim those. You're not just gonna grab all 30 and throw them in the database. You're gonna skim them. And like, does this one look like it, it has something to do with us? Um, you don't necessarily have to read the paper, but you want to at least skim the title and stuff and make sure that it's not um, not the bottom of the Great Lakes, right? So we're, we care about the ocean stuff. Um, and it might be about a river, which is cool and all, but we're not focusing on rivers, right? So, so as long as it passes that initial smell test, I'm like, yeah, I think this, this, this might be relevant to us. Um, then you can um, uh, grab that citation, right? Gr grab the whole group. Um, maybe I should do a demo in a sec. Um, and grab that and the PDF. And then when you're done for the session, before you wrap up for the day, you should add those into, into our Zotero. So you can just go and, and add that RAS file. I made a video for you guys last week about how to do this, but we could do it again. Um, and then you just wanna come back and check. And you just wanna look and make sure that, um, because since, since you know, uh, one of you is using database uh, Scopus, and one of you is using um, a JSTOR and all that kind of stuff, right? We're kind of on, on parallel tracks, um, which is fine. We probably are gonna find duplicative records, right? So we're probably gonna find, you know, so, so Heather and Carson um, and Isabel might find the same reference, right? But because you're doing it, you know, over there and you're doing it over there, and we, w we won't know that. But what we'll know is when we go to do the upload. So we merge it into the database, um, so theoretically, the database should catch it, that it's a duplicate, but because each of the databases have slightly different, like some of them have, they're, they're not, they're not, they shouldn't be giving us different page numbers and stuff, but some of them have more fields filled in depending on the database. So it won't look like the exact same entry. And so therefore it can be, it, it, it may well be um, uh, entered. So after you enter it, just have a quick look and skim down and so uh, we can, I think the easiest thing here is we have, um, the, you, you can pick how you want the, 
the information displayed, if whether you're on the web or you're on your app or whatever, and it's, it's whatever floats your boat. But I think the easiest is to, is to have um, the, do it sorted by author. And so again, I can just hit one of these guys up here and then it'll put all the authors together. And I can go through and just have a look. And so in this case, it looks like, like if my first just look at it, it looks like, oh my gosh, maybe this is the same, maybe these two references are duplicates. But then when I look over here at the title, it's like, oh no, they're different, they're different. So, so that, that author has, has created more than one paper, but it's not, it's not a duplicative record, right? If it was, I would, if this was a duplicate, I just come up here and hit control, and I just come up here and I would say, uh, um, what did I say? I say move, to, move item to trash, and it'll suck it out of our database if, if, you, if we notice a duplicate. And then, uh, does that make sense? So we're just adding to it. So, so when you guys start this work, um, uh, just whoever does the microplastic and abyss search in you know, Google Scholar, just put your name. And so then we'll know that, oh, we don't have to do that search because somebody already did that and, and found that. And so just to be clear, when you put your name up there, that means both you searched it and anything useful you added into the database. Um, and, so, and so this is a, is a good, rigorous way of keeping track of stuff. Now, um, there aren't, I mean, as we've talked about, there's 20,000 uh, papers on microplastics, right, in the last couple of years, so it's insane. But there's a small fraction of those are actually going to be about, you know, deep sea plastics, water column plastics in the ocean, right? So for us, mostly this is probably going to be okay. This is probably going to be enough, right, for us to, to sort of, hunt through and search, and maybe we get 100 references or something that you, you, know, you have to look through, or 150 references you have to look through, that's fine. Most of these will produce more like five or 10 or something like that with each query. If we were to get something like thousands, then that's, that's we don't have the time to read through, th skim a thousand papers, right? So at this stage, and so, um, so that's where you would add another thing. So, so if you guys were doing your own research, and I, uh, so I'm keeping track, and then, oh my gosh, I discovered that this, it's still, this search is too generic. I'm pulling in too many things, um, right? You can always just insert like a third term, right? And, and that would keep track of it. But the point is, when you guys do your research, write this down. Use a spreadsheet. It sounds maybe a little lame or extra time. It is totally worth it. You will be totally screwed if you don't do this. There are so many permutations for this. There's a, this database covers that, that one is there. Maybe today you thought of using the word microplastics, whereas yesterday you, you were using the term microplastic, you know, singular. All that stuff matters. And so it's all good. We just want to drop our breadcrumbs so we know where we went. And we don't duplicate, duplicate efforts and don't waste time and all that kind of stuff. So that's that. So, that, that's, so that's one thing we're continuing to work on. And the other one is, uh, and this one, wait, we haven't really, okay, so, so that's in this library hunting, right? Then we have a couple other things here. And these are websites where people, um, you know, we're not the first one to think about this. Other people have recognized this is a problem. Other people are like, hey, it's hard to figure out what the concentration of microplastics are in the water column or, um, or the bottom of the ocean or whatever. And so maybe we should just sort of do what we're doing. And so some people have done that. And so we can look. So here's one. So this one is called Litterbase. And so what these folks have done is they've um, had undergrads like you guys go through and, and um, kind of do some of the work. None of these databases work exactly the way we want it to work though. So, so they're helpful, they're cool, but they're not really answering our question, which is want to know the concentration of polypropylene, the concentration of this, the concentration of fibers, you know, all these kinds of things that we're trying to look at. And so um, this is more um, just trying to round up some of the literature for us. This, and importantly, this, a lot of these things will come from consulting reports government reports, um, long-term research monitoring stuff that's not necessarily in peer-reviewed literature. 
So it's, it's, it's good data, it's not as bad data, but it's not necessarily accessible through the typical peer review thing. So, so again, every source of data is a bit different. There'll be some overlap, so some of these papers that we have in our database, I'm sure are in here, but there'll be thing, other ones that aren't. So if we take a look at um, this bad boy, um, I can do global map. And this is a map of all the different uh, uh, references for um, trash. And so the plastics are the purple circles. And the, the, the size of the dot is corresponding to how much plastic or how, how much trash, the quantity of trash that they, were, they figured out. Some of this is on a beach. Some of this is on the surface of the ocean. Some of this is in the water column. Some of this is down deep. So it's, it's, all, it's all over the place, right? And so, um, so this is a place we can mine. So I emailed the, in this case, I emailed the folks that did this. I was like, hey, is there an easy way to query out and get the stuff out? And she's like, well, you know, I don't know. So she sent me this thing, which I'll, send, I'll share with you guys, um, which is essentially their, their how to, how to use it. Um, but she just sent it to me and I haven't had a chance to go through it. So you guys can take a stab. What, we, what, I'd, what I'd really, really like to be able to do is go up here and go, hey, Litterbase, give me all of your references that are deep sea sediments or, or marine sediments. Ready, go. And then just spit out a file. I don't know if it will do that. But just to show you guys, um, like, so if I click on this, this dude here, after a second, it'll pop up and it'll say, it'll say the name, it'll say the name of the uh, authors, right? The year the, the, the report or the, or the study was published. And, and it says the title and everything. And then it has a little bit about um, uh, the year they sampled. So they sampled in 2013. And this study was looking at metal, timber. So this is like a general trash survey thing, right? Um, and so, so this is cool. They have a measure of concentration. Um, in this case, this is per surface area, per, per square kilometer, which is cool. But again, that's not exactly helpful to us. But we can maybe go to that paper and mine it ourselves, right? So it might not be in this database in the form that we might use it, but so this could be really helpful. So we have, so this is another source where we can mine references and get, get stuff out. Make sense? So, so our current phase in terms of literature review is to keep adding to our database here, adding, 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 and then probably after today, we'll start on the next phase, which is actually starting to go in and, and, and pull some of those numbers out of the papers and stuff. Does that make sense? All right, cool. Um, uh, and so this stuff, <coughs> this is, I put a, in our same shared folder, I put a thing called literature targets. And so on this page is the, is the uh, stuff when we go to the library, the library databases and hunt. And so these are all the possible combinations of things we can do. Um, I think we can leave off the nanoplastics and the microfibers for now. I think, I think this microplastic seems like it seems like it's capturing most of the stuff. So essentially, somebody's like, okay, I'm gonna do Google Scholar, and I'm gonna do the Abyss microplastics, and then I'll do the Bathy microplastics and the Benthic microplastics, all that kind of stuff. And then once you guys get that, and maybe, maybe you can put an X in there when you're temporarily working on it, so no, nobody else like jumps on and starts to you know, get in the way, um, and then go for it like that. Make sense? Okay, cool. I'm also going to, and, and then on this page, here are three different uh, databases that when you hit the, the hyperlink, it'll take you to there. And so um, I guess I need a couple folks uh, on, actually, why don't, why don't we all start on this one maybe, just for you know, 20 minutes, half hour, and see if you guys can suck out the full reference like relatively easily, right? So, so theoretically, with this database, um, it's organizing the data, but it should also be easily, easily, um, you know, pulling, we should, we should easily be able to pull information out. Um, but I've not tried that on these yet. So, so that's what I want you guys to take a first stab at and see if we can make that work. Um, and so I'll also upload for litter base 
I'm also going to, I'll also upload um, this, this how-to manual that they just sent me. Cool? Sound good? All right, rock and roll. Why don't you guys take a few minutes and see, see if we can play around with these databases and see if we can suck out some of these references. And I'll share this with you guys also just to make sure you get it. <laughs> 